A little follow-up on our first episode when you talked about being in the ring for your first time at the Air Canada Centre. Um, follow-ups were, how does that match go down? How does the match get laid out? Are you getting told how it goes by an agent or is it up to you and Sick Boy to figure that out? What was the finish and who came up with it? What was the most memorable part, memorable part of the match? What happens when you come back through the curtain? Any other memorable backstage memories from that first night? So the, my first night, as I, I've mentioned before at ACC, it was the, the craziest, most chaotic thing in the world because it wasn't just a dark match. It, it started out as being just a workout with the rest of them. So a bunch of tryout people all in the ring. There's a lot of us. There was a lot of us there, and I was fortunate enough to be picked out of the whole group uh, for because I'm a chain wrestler, I'm a, a technical wrestler, so uh, they wouldn't bring their they won't bring their hand their heads up from their phones unless your feet are correct. Is if your feet if your footing is bad, they're just going to go back and look on Instagram or whatever uh, or whatever they were doing at the time. They wouldn't give you a second look. So right away, my feet were correct because I used to box a bit. Uh, and professional wrestling, I'm very picky about, nitpicky about uh, certain techniques. So my feet were great, and so I got picked. I think it was basically because of my technical wrestling ability um, to have this match. So that's first. That's first and foremost. I went there just to work out, and then I got thrown into a match, which blew my mind. Uh, it was against Sick Boy from WCW. He was, this was the merger. Uh, WCW was bought out by WWE. So um, with that being said, uh, they, Sick Boy was trying out as well as I was to get a job with this company. Um, not much now, not much sticks out of my head because I've always been a dude that always focuses on ahead, going ahead, figuring out what I want to do in my career going further. So I never really reflect on stuff. I'm not a guy that goes back and thinks about it. Uh, one thing I will say for sure, though, uh, and I know this for a fact, uh, Tony Candel, uh, no, not Tony Candel, Tony, Tony Gurria was my agent. Tony Gurria was my agent. Uh, when you're in these situations, you're not allowed to do fancy stuff. They didn't, they said, Hey, keep it all in the ring. Don't like, give me an idea of what you're doing. Uh, you have five minutes, five minutes with entrances is what we had. So we have five minutes, including the time that we have to get down to the ring. So me and sick boy have basically three and a half to four minutes, uh, to put on something and uh, make people look at us in a certain way. I don't remember anything <laughs> anything about the match except the fact that I had a headlock on him and he went for a back suplex and I landed on my feet. And a lot of people pop for that that I know because I'm very much a ground professional wrestler. I'm grounded based and stuff like that. And like, oh my God, you like did a backflip to your feet? I'm like, yeah, I can do that stuff. I just choose not to do that stuff because I love uh, reality-based professional wrestling. I've always stuck to what I, what I am and what I, what I enjoy and my creed, my belief in what this is. So anyways, yeah, I did a backflip to my feet off of a uh, back suplex, and then I, I don't know what, where it went from there. But it was basically me as a dancing baby face uh, getting beat up and then going for pins because that was my thing. I wasn't going to do crazy, crazy moves. I was going to be the guy that showed that I was a good wrestler and I could be built on. Um, so in that five minutes, uh, Tony told us, don't go out there and do anything crazy. The finish would be Sick Boy is going to go over. I do believe Sick Boy went over um, with uh, – it was easy. It was, an, it was a good night. It didn't hurt. Uh, the thing that I take away from that match – uh, coming back through Gorilla, all the guys were uh, just chuckling because I did a goofy little dance back then. I was very charismatic. Uh, all the guys were impressed. They enjoyed my stuff. It was neat to come behind the curtain and then just give a chuckle like, oh, that was good. Good stuff, guys. Good stuff. Uh, thanks. Um, so that part was great. Uh, I, I love that part. Uh, the part that I remember the most from that match is just going out there and walking out that entrance for the first time and seeing over 16,000 people um, 
a lot of people will talk about it being um, uh, 16,000 people uh, that it would be too much or you'd have stage fright. Honestly, when you look at that many people, the sensory overload is a lot. It's too much to take in. Um, so looking out there, it just looked like, uh, like a moving sea. It didn't even look. I couldn't, I couldn't pull one person out of the crowd. It was just a sea of human beings. Uh, so it was a, I, don't know, I don't know how else to explain it, but it was kind of neat to see because it just seemed like one body movement uh, instead of ind individuals in the crowd. Coming back. Of course, that's the same night that the guy had to take off. He wasn't there to do the security role. And the craziest moment uh, of my professional wrestling career was right there when I was looking up at the dead man, the Undertaker. I had no idea what he was going to do to me. He could have given me that last ride power bomb. He could have choke bomb me or choke slam me. He could have done a gorilla press to the outside. I was game for anything because this was one of my idols. Uh, one of those guys that you really respect. Of course, The Undertaker had that broken hand. He just hit me with that sweet punch, and I took the best bump I possibly could and rolled out of that ring so that he could get more heat on Brock Lesnar in that feud. Um, so to be in there with these two giant, giant human beings, uh, the top guys of the, the sport, was an absolute um, – it was an absolute uh, – mind-boggling experience. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Professor wrestling is a wonderful thing.